This video is an introduction into photogrammetry. I'll talk about what photogrammetry is, how it works and what can be used for, and why it will be important for game technology and the game industry in the years to come. So, as the name says, photogrammetry is based on video footage or photographs that you take of objects in the real world or architecture in the real world that you want to digitize to use it in a game virtual reality application or for 3D printing. So this example here is a sculpt by the guys from Horrific Creations. You will find their link in the comments to this video. Uh, please look them up. They do some really, really great stuff when it comes to sculpting. Um, and so, yeah, what I did here was I took around about 50 images of the head from all sides and um, then imported them into photogrammetry software, in this case it's 3D Sapphire, to generate a 3D model including the textures out of the photos. So what happens is that the, f the photogrammetry software analyzes each picture and stacks them together to form a 3D low density point cloud out of the 3D information that it gets from the photos or the frames. And um, then what you do is you go through certain steps from a low density point cloud to a high density point cloud and then later on we generate the fully textured polygon 3D model out of that high density point cloud. And as you can see, the photorealism that comes from the photogrammetry process is pretty much incredible. So, because these 3D models are super highly detailed and uh, have literally millions of polygons, this is something we cannot use in real time 3D engines. So, what we need to do is to actually generate a lower polygon version out of the high polygon original. So um, what I've done here is I imported the 3D model into Blender. This is the original photogrammetrized model and you can see that it resembles the real world sculpt um, to a really, 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 really great level. Um, and the polygon structure is pretty, pretty solid, but too high. So what we need to do is to actually retopologize this model um, after we've cut away some of the topology that we don't need. Uh, in some cases, um, like the backdrops in this image were also um, polygonized in the part of the scene. And that can be quite helpful because we can actually generate 3D models of streets and uh, buildings or furniture out of it as well. So with the 3D model that I had, I now retopologized around it um, in a pretty quick approach to retopology. It's not a perfect model, but it was good enough for this purpose. And um, as you will see, the 3D model that I generated out of this has far less polygons. And this is the low polygon version compared to the high polygon version that came from the photogrammetry process. And uh, after unwrapping this, I then used the original to bake the surface information, the, uh, the, the as you can see here, the textures um, of the original and the ambient occlusion information into the textures for the 3D model that I want to use in the actual game engine. Now the baking processes in Blender are actually quite solid and uh, the results were actually quite astounding because 90% um, of each model that you see in a game uh, are convincing just because of good materials and textures that is super important. So now I imported this into Unity and um, for this example, I used the high definition rendering pipeline that comes with Unity 2018 and 2019. Be yeah, and here you can see 
Uh, this is the actual model using the bake textures and the bake texture information like the normal maps. I uh, put some light sources into this and um, the high definition rendering pipeline is a highly photorealistic rendering engine that does a great, great job even on uh, standard laptops uh, that, like the one that I use. So um, once the scene is in full effect, you can see that we will have uh, volumetric lighting, the textures work beautifully, the object, even though it's a low polygon version of the object that we originally created, looks almost exactly like the real deal. And this is quite important, not only for games. Uh, I can use this character in a game now, but what's more important is that you can use this for anything that involves game technology. So one of the big things that has been happening recently and why um, weird fans of design are really keen on using this is actually that game technology has been in has been used more and more often in movie production be it set design be it previous be it creating actual cgi movies rendered in the engine um, every part of movie production now is going to use for uh, game technology and the different techniques that we use to actually create games because essentially a level is a movie set. So what we can do now is use objects like these or photogrammetrize an entire movie set or a street um, and then use that in a retopologized form in our game engine to recreate the set as it is in the real world. We can actually create sets that do not exist yet for set planning. The powerful thing is, I mean, you can do this in Blender and any other 3D modeling software, but what we can do with game technology is actually create this as a level, create interactive tools that we use in those sets, and then, for instance, create a virtual reality version of this, enabling a movie producer or a director to walk through a set in virtual reality as if it's really there, but also interact with it. Uh, for instance, we could give them control over the lighting in the scene, so they can adjust the lights, the light, the height of the light, the type of the lights, color, um, down to changing certain textures and uh, 3D assets in the scene by moving them around, by quickly exchanging them, and um, even playing around with the post-processing effects that uh, in Unity are based on actual camera and post-processing uh, uh, post effect, uh, effects in the movie world. So this could be a very valuable tool for movie production, whether it's set planning, um, costume planning, previous or actual movie creation. Um, if you want to take a good, uh, if you want to see a good example for this, take a look at the Adam Short movie series from Neil Blomkamp, which has been created using Unity, the high definition rendering pipelines and photogrammetry, um, and it's a stunning example of um, how well the software works. One interesting aspect is that because everything is interactive and real-time rendering, scenes can be changed on the fly while the scene is actually playing out. You can take a light, dim the light, change the atmosphere in the room when it comes to shadows and things like that. And um, this enables um, people to have a much faster production when it comes to creating movies or planning movie scenes on top of the whole game industry using this for creating really stunning games, of course. Um, and yes, of course, we can also 3D print photogrammetrized objects, no problem with that. And then the combination of that can be quite stunning. So create a movie using this technology, and once you have the assets, you also create with the same assets a game for that movie. So um, this is a really, really interesting field. Um, we will go into this very, very soon. Um, we will teach our students about photogrammetry and how to implement it. And we will also look into movie production and actually play around with that. So um, I will keep you posted on that. 
And uh, to make sure you don't miss it, please like, subscribe and share. And uh, we hopefully see you soon. Leave comments. Um, if you have questions, also leave them in the comment section. And um, hopefully see you soon.